Well, as always, there is a calculator shortcut for running a, a one proportion Z test. And um, I'm also going to do two more examples with it. So to do the one sample Z test for a proportion on the TI-84, you're going to press stat, scroll over to test. All right, there's test. And down to five one prop Z test and press enter. You're going to be prompted for a couple of things. You see P naught, so that's from your null. X is the number of successes, and it needs to be an integer. If it's not, it won't work. And it's a sample size or number of trials. And this prop part is for your alternate hypothesis. It's either not equal to your P-naught, it's less than your P-naught, or it's greater than your P-naught. You need to select one. Then finally, select Calculate or Draw and press Enter. Usually calculates all you need. It doesn't hurt to do Draw. It draw will show your P-value. So if you hit Calculate, this is the screen that you're going to see. And this P right here, that one is your P-value, not the P-hat but that P there. Now, if you use the one prop C test and don't show your work, you probably won't get credit for the do portion on the scoring. Always report your Z score and the P value when doing this. So um, let's revisit our M&Ms. And this is, we wanted to test our P is 0.2. P, our alternate is P is not 20%, where P is a true proportion of orange M&Ms using alpha is 0.05. All right. And they didn't tell me alpha was 0.05, so I just kind of assumed it, unless it's, I'm given some other reason to change it. The first condition we check is the random condition. And the 122 M&Ms, we're not really sure it's random. But the alternative to that, if we can say that it's representative, that's the whole point of doing random. And there's no reason not to think that these are representative. So you could say that it's reasonable to assume a bag of M&Ms is representative of the rest. The 10% condition, well, 122 M&Ms is definitely less than 10% of all M&Ms. Large counts condition, if I do my NP and my NQ, I get 48.8 and 97.6. Both of those are greater than 10. So the conditions are satisfied, so we can use the normal model to find a one sample Z test for P. Now, um, let's go ahead and create the normal model. I know that P is, the claim is 0 0.20. Calculate my expected standard deviation for that population, and I get 0 0.0362, so that's my model. And if I were to graph it out, it would look something like that. But the main thing I needed was that P which I already had from the problem, and my standard deviation. So I can go ahead and calculate my test statistic. So there's my normal model. I know P hat from the sample, and I now I can calculate a z-score. Well, it's going to be P hat, my test, uh, my um, point estimate for my proportion, minus my parameter over my standard deviation for the population. And I get a z-score of negative 0.77. I'm actually trying to do what's called a two-sided test because I'm just trying to say different than 20%. Uh, so it could be less than negative 0.77 or greater than 0.77. In other words, it looks something like this. And if I go ahead and say I just did normal CDF with a negative infinity to negative 0.77 and then doubled that, I would basically get 0.4413. So that's the probability. Now, since that with that probability, we're going to fail to reject the proportion of 20%. We're going to say, hey, this is not that surprising. Uh, even though my original value was different, well, that's some evidence that it's not 20%, but it's not convincing evidence. So because our p-value of 0.44 is greater than 0.05, we fail to reject H0. There is insufficient evidence to suggest that the proportion of orange M&Ms differs from the advertised 20%. On to our next example of unfit teens. We had already done the hypothesis, so I'll restate them here again. Our null is that it's 30%. Our alternate is that it's greater than 30%. And we're going to go ahead and use an alpha of 0.05 again. Well, I'm going to check the 10% condition which is uh, 2205 is less than 10% of the total population of adolescents. Do the large counts condition, and I'm definitely getting greater than 10 for both of those. 
and the researchers say the sample was representative. If the sample is representative, it doesn't need to be random or fine. Since the conditions are satisfied, we can use a normal model to perform a one sample Z test for P. All right, so let me just create my normal model really quickly. I know my null is a 0 0.30, so my standard deviation for my population is going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 divided by the 2205, and there it is. So that's my normal model right there, okay? Let's go ahead and actually do the calculation. Remember, you won't actually have to draw this piece here, but you do need to calculate for what your model is. So my p hat from my sample is 750 out of 2205 is 0.34. Is that big enough to say that it, uh, I think it's more than 30%? Well, we'll find out. Let's calculate our test statistic. So we actually found 0.34 our parameter, which we are testing, is 30%. That'll go there. And I have my standard deviation right here. So my z-score is, is 4.08, all right? And the probability that z is greater than 4.08 is effectively zero. It's like off in the edge here. In that case, that means with such a tiny probability, like it's zero, we're going to reject our null. So here's your concluding statement. Because our p-value of 0 is less than 0.05, we reject H0. The sample provides convincing evidence that more than 30% of adolescents have a poor fitness level.